everyone! So, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that Greta Gerwig's Barbie movie is coming out in just a couple weeks, and I wanted to make a video in honor of that, and I was trying to think about how I could incorporate the theme of Barbie into one of my videos, and I decided that the best way to do it would be to recommend some of my favorite pink books, because anyone that knows Barbie knows that she lives in her pink dream house, in this pink world, everything she wears is pink, and I heard that the movie used up so much pink that there was temporarily like a shortage of pink paint and pink products because the set was using up so many of the pink resources that the world had. And I was thinking if Barbie were to decorate a bookshelf on her dream house, she would of course only allow pink books to be put there. So that's why it seemed only appropriate to recommend my favorite pink books that would be fit for even Barbie. The first one is Finlay Donovan is Killing It. And this is a super unique concept for a story. So it's about this single mother Finlay Donovan who is going through a recent divorce and she's also an author and one day she's talking to her agent at a coffee shop and she's talking about this murder mystery that she's writing and a woman at the shop overhears her and misunderstands the conversation and she thinks that Finlay is actually a hit woman and this woman at the coffee shop says that she'll pay Finlay $50,000 if she kills her ex-husband for her and at first Finlay thinks this is absolutely ridiculous because she's not a hit woman and how would she even go about doing that without ending up in prison? But as the story goes on, she starts to think more about just how helpful it could be to have an extra $50,000 and what was once such an insane suggestion starts to become something that she considers more and more because she's dealing with late house payments, she wants to keep custody of her kids, all these things that $50,000 could help her out with tremendously and she's weighing, is it worth it to temporarily become a hit woman if it means that so many other parts of my life will start to fall into place again. This book is an incredibly unique concept. I don't know how the author came up with it and I love that it's a mix of thriller and comedy. There's a little bit of romance there. This book really has everything. Okay and I'm cheating a little with this one because this is definitely more purple but there is distinct pink at the top pink at the top right there, so I'm still counting this as one of my favorite pink books. It's One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This book is about August, who has recently moved to New York City. She's in her early 20s and she's moved around for most of her life and has a really hard time settling into one place. And one day on the subway, she meets Jane and is very infatuated with her, but because it's New York City with millions of people, when August leaves the subway car, she assumes she'll never see Jane again and Jane will just be this mysterious stranger that she saw once one day but then a few days later she gets back on the subway and sees Jane again and then a few days later she sees Jane again on the subway and is starting to think this has to be more than a coincidence and that is when August learns that Jane is stuck in essentially a time loop she has been riding this subway for decades her only existence is on this subway and August is the only person that has ever been able to see her multiple times so Jane needs August's help to get out of this time loop get off the subway and start living an actual life this book is such an interesting take on a romance novel because you obviously have the romance aspect but there are all these supernatural elements too and there's also a great cast of characters. All of August's roommates are incredible characters. Casey McQuiston is really good at writing a full entertaining cast of characters so this book is fun for so many elements not just the romance. The next book is We Ride Upon Sticks and I absolutely love this cover. This is the main reason I bought this book. I just love the neon pink. This is one of the most unique concepts I've ever heard of for a book. It is about a high school field hockey team from Salem, Massachusetts, and one summer before their senior year, they decide that they're going to make a deal with some evil spirit, whether it be the devil or Satan or just some other mysterious spirit, and they basically promise this spirit that they will give it offerings and do its bidding as long as they can win their state field hockey championships. So every single chapter you see the perspective of a different player on the team, so you can see their dynamics on and off the field and the different friendships that they have among the team and the different family lives that everyone is living. And the personalities of these girls are all super different. Some of them really live life by the books and don't like to break the rules. And some of them love breaking the rules and are constantly getting in trouble. But this crazy promise that they made to the spirit means that they all have to start doing crazy things and acting in ways they wouldn't have originally. This also just made me nostalgic for high school in a weird way because even among all the crazy 
lazy parts of this book. It is really sweet to read about all of these girls that are good friends in high school and are trying to help each other towards a common goal, even if they're going about it in an absolutely crazy way. The next book is a romance book called The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. The main character of this book is Shay Goldstein, which I loved. I have never read a book where the main character has my name and it's also spelled the same way. And she works for a public radio company. She's almost 30 and she has had this same radio job since she started interning for them in college. And she always works behind the scenes. She's a producer on other people's podcasts and radio shows. And Shay has a coworker who really annoys her named Dominic. He's 24 years old. And one of his only personality traits is that he has a master's degree. It's like all he talks about and it annoys Shay so much. And she really doesn't like working with him. And one day they're in a meeting at work and their manager is explaining that the station isn't doing well and they need to create some new program to bring in new listeners. And Shay, as a joke, suggests that they make a podcast that is hosted by two people who are exes. But her boss absolutely loves that idea. The only problem is they don't know two people who are exes who are willing to do the podcast. And Shay and Dominic decide that they will pretend to be exes and host this radio show to help save the station. And it ends up being way more successful than either of them realized. And being on this radio show and getting to know each other better makes them start to like each other more. And they build this really cute friendship and then relationship. So this is a super unique concept for a book. Podcasts are just so popular right now. I thought it was really smart of the author to come up with that as the backdrop for a romance story. The last book that I'm recommending is The Charm Offensive. And this is my all time favorite romance book because not only is it a great romance book and I love reading romance, but the backdrop of this story is that it takes place on a reality TV show that is basically a fictional version of The Bachelor. So the main characters in this story are Charlie and Dev. And Charlie has recently been cast on the lead of the reality show Finding Prince Char Charming. And Dev works as a producer on that show and is assigned to be Charlie's handler. So he's supposed to help Charlie through the process of dating 20 plus women and at first they're just co-workers they don't really get along but that slowly becomes friendship and then they realize that there might be something more than friendship there but the problem is Charlie is dating 20 plus women and he's expected to be engaged to one of these women at the end of the show so there's this complicated issue where they can't really follow their hearts or else Dev's job is at risk Charlie's reputation is at risk and they have to be balancing all these things as they're falling for each other so this book is again a super unique concept. I loved the writing style. They're both two fantastic characters and this book also has a really good overall cast of characters so all of their other co-workers and friends are super entertaining and it's overall just a really great story. The last pink book I'll be recommending even though I don't have it with me is Happy Place by Emily Henry. This book is so popular right now I probably don't even need to explain the plot of it because everyone's heard of it. This is a romance book and the main couple in the book is Harriet and Wynne and they've been dating since college and every year them and their college friends go on a week-long summer trip to one of their friends beach houses but the problem when the book begins is that Harriet and Wynn have recently broken off their engagement but they have yet to tell any of their friends and that's made even more complicated when they're both invited to the vacation at the beach house and they have to pretend that they're still in a relationship because two of their other friends are getting married and they don't want to ruin their wedding day so this book definitely plays into the tropes of second chance romance it's a little bit enemies to lovers because they're not really Really very fond of each other when this book begins because they've recently had this tumultuous breakup. This is the perfect summer read. I love that it takes place in the backdrop of this beautiful summer house. All of their friends are great characters and Emily Henry is just a hilarious writer. I would read anything she writes. And that is everything. Those are all of my favorite pink books that I think even Barbie herself would approve of. I can't wait to actually see the movie in theaters but in the meantime maybe it'll be enough to just honor Barbie by thinking about my favorite pink books.